It is 601, following the meeting of the Weekly Select Board to order. First order of business is the minutes from the meeting of August 29th. Um, Joyce, Julie, any comments? No comments from me. No, com no comments from me either. I have nothing. I would move that we accept the minutes. Second. From... Okay. All in favor, Julie. Yes. Joyce. Aye. Me. Aye. Next, vendor and payroll warrants. Any comments? None. Hearing yes. none. Moving on. Public comment. Any comment from anyone in the public who is not on the subject, not on the agenda? I'm just looking. I don't. Unless you're waiting for the town administrator to come up. What? It's uh, yeah. If any discussion will happen, it updates. The updates. Okay. 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 Fine. So it is on the internet. It. It's under yeah. That's an update. Ah, see none. Scheduled appointments. We have none. COVID nineteen. COVID nineteen is making a comeback. And we'll let mm -hmm. everyone know that we have rapid tests available at the town offices, library, and police station. We have a sample right here. Sample right there. Uh, all business review discussed draft RFP for the sale and restoration of the Waverly Center School. Brian, so I am waiting for uh, purchase and sale agreement back from uh, to be returned to town council. Okay, um, and I also had a discussion with town council about um, the idea of a right of first refusal, which would give the town you know the right. Uh, to purchase the property at a future date if the, mm. the winning proposer was to sell it. Um, her recommendation was that that might make the it might make it unattractive to developers. It might they might find difficulty in financing um, if they need to finance the project because the lenders you know the lenders would pull the property for security and if the security is going to disappear, mm. um, it, it's not very attractive. To, um, it was recommended uh, instead that the, that we might consider like a development agreement. Um, and so the development agreement would be would be uh, useful if we wanted to pull the, the proposer, the, the developer, the facilitator, whatever we want to call them. Um, if we wanted them to, uh, you know, have a specific use. That we want them to make up the property. Likely, if it, if it was a, a you know a single family residential home, probably less attractive. But um, the historic preservation restriction would likely protect the building in the sense of if mm -hmm. if, if the building was to go to waste in terms of you know there's the concern of uh, demolition by neglect, which is somebody just neglects the property to the point where mm -hmm. it's essentially has to be demolished. The historic preservation restriction protects against that. Um, so that's that's a uh, it's something that I think the board will have to consider when we, when the RFP is put out whether that development agreement is something that mm -hmm. would want to be included. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Obviously, we don't we can't see the specifics of it, but at this point, but that's the idea is that yeah. whatever they propose is what we would hold their you know right. we would hold their right. feet to the fire to do. Right. Um, Can you say again what like why would a say a bank or some financial institution? Um, Think that the security would go away with the right of first refusal. My understanding is yeah. basically if they want to sell it, they have to ask us to buy it first. Yeah. And if we can't afford it, then we That's true. say we can't afford it. Go ahead, sell it to somebody else. Or if we somehow we can afford it, or we decide we somehow want to do what's necessary, we say, okay, we'll buy it. Yeah. Um, like why does that make it less attractive. It doesn't seem like no such I, a big yeah, thing. That's a good question. And um and it I don't it doesn't protect us from the neglect necessarily. That might be from some other um, mechanism right. that right. you said, but it seems to maybe protect from somebody buying it, you know, um, I'll say under false pretenses when their intention is fully to just flip it, sell it to somebody else and let them do whatever. The heck they want with it yeah somehow you know turn a quick profit and then leave somebody else kind of holding the bag yeah in a way and that's what it kind of protects from 
in a way. At least we're not left in the bank. <laughs> uh, but we would we would have the chance to get that property back and not let it, you know, fall right. into the, 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 the hands of somebody. Back. Yeah, you'd have a chance to get the property back. Yeah, whatever but, the price would be. But okay. I'm not saying that we necessarily should yeah. no, include I think it, right. but I don't think I understand why why would a um, yeah, I, someone I, loaning someone money to buy it think that that's a bad thing. Yeah, that you've got at least the first buyer is lined up, and then any buyers after that are just second in line. Right. Uh, to a town, and we, as far as I know, as long as I've been on the select board, we've never exercised our right of first refusal on uh, anything like conservation lands and stuff. Or maybe I'm getting the wrong name for it. On um, uh, there was a yeah, there's right of first refusal. Right, there's right of first refusal, on, and, and but if it ever meant kind of coming up with money, we right. were we were not really able to do that for that whatever purpose was. Yeah. Right. So the right of first refusal, it doesn't seem like it's that big a deal if we have it, honestly, or if we don't. Yeah, I can follow up with that house. But that's yeah, that's the part I don't understand. Yeah. And um, won't there be historical and other restrictions that run with the building that'll keep it from being flipped to some, you know, just the straw buyer buying it to flip it for another purpose? And historical. That's, yeah, those are the restriction will those may right. yeah will protect the it, it will ensure that the building maintains consistency or compliance with the mm. um, yeah. secretary of interior's guidelines for historic mm -hmm. buildings yeah so it will that's Which what it largely will. governs the external address right yeah so there's there's a historic yeah. so there are different kinds of protection yeah. in there even if you don't have right of first refusal there are other things that are right in the development agreement would be uh would be another thing and right. right and that would be related mostly to the to the use of the building yeah um, right and I, they're, they're more common when you have a, a much larger you know a much mm -hmm. larger building um and you want the you know the attractiveness in the you want redevelopment for a certain purpose right you right. want commercial uses yeah. or something let's say in, in a larger mill building or something that's yeah. what the town really wants to encourage uh, do, do development agreement, but okay. Um, All right, thanks. So, yeah, so I'll, I'll make sure we have those for the next meeting. Um, okay, and that way we can move that move that forward. Uh, again, it's I think it's I think, I think so it requires obviously the RFP process requires thirty days. For, you know, to be out up to bid for lack of a better term for thirty days. Um, there's advertising requirements in the newspaper. Um, you know, over the past 12 months, I've probably shown three people the building. Mm -hmm. um, by far, the, the main interest has been residential. And then there's also the question of, uh, and it's probably worth a conversation with the Historical Society about, you know, the, the ultimate outcome, I'll say, no, I'll say this was an ultimate outcome with the, with the Milton Bottle, right? Um, as to what as to what they would like as to what they would like to have happen with it. Um, so whether whether the town would preserve an easement now before what's hypothetically let's say there's a proposal that the select board wants to sell to the option is we could the town could grant an easement to the historical site prior to the sale, right? Mm -hmm. Um and protect the, the milk bottle in that space or the land around it, certain land around it for um it could also be conditioned on the the proposer and historical society coming to an agreement as to you know what they would want to do with it. So that's another sort of another decision that I have to make. But yeah. yeah. So okay. So to be continued, we will hopefully see a draft RFP at the next meeting or one after that. Yeah. Yeah, it should be at the next one. I mean. The the one that the board previously was was sent it I mean it's not going to change much we're going to yeah. slap the, the attachments yeah. on the back end yeah right okay okay the next item to discuss consider use of CLF RF money for the repair of the emergency backup generator at the Wake the Elementary School uh, we've had several communications mm -hmm. from people in town indicating that this has become an urgent situation. Uh, yeah, yeah, I gotta say, until I wasn't thinking of it as urgent because I'm like, when's the last time we used that generator uh, or would need to have used it? And I guess, um, 
that the storms, maybe there were some times when the third week was And uh, yeah, it's our emergency, the, the school is our official uh, emergency shelter. Yeah. Um, and then I, it was before my time here, but I guess in the past, they had a lot of food at the school. Yeah. And there was a loss that I guess it was actually large enough where the town of Chicago insurance claim oh. the loss of that food because the power went out and they couldn't keep it. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Um, I definitely appreciated the historical knowledge of folks who've been here a long time piping in. Yes. Yes. About I what agree. would make it important to act on this now? Yeah. Yeah. Um, while I am reluctant to authorize CLF for money for this particular purpose, it seems like we don't really have any many alternatives for. Yeah. I mean, if we were going to have a this. special town meeting, it would mm -hmm. take us it takes us something like four weeks at least to get a special town meeting going, right? Um, and this is hurricane season, mm -hmm. um, and maybe we should have. You know, learned about this earlier. Maybe there's a lot of should have, could have, would have, but um, it, this might actually. I mean, ideally, yes, you go to special town meeting. But, but maybe the, the, the question that came up to me is, what would we be doing if we did not have this money available? Like in some, in we'd some... be hustling for a special town meeting, <laughs> right? And, and okay. we'd have that risk for that period of time. That's kind of what I think. Mm -hmm. Right, because mm -hmm. nor normally this isn't money that's available. That right. Right. happens to be here at the moment. Yeah. And we're in that time period where free cash disappears, right? From right. June 30th till like we end of October when the year gets this year gets closed out. So it would have to be yeah. if it were to happen soon, it would be you know stabilization of money is likely that would have to be used. Yeah. Forgot that free cash is unavailable for that period of time. Yeah, but also a town meeting required. Yeah, still coming so, out of state. It, it, and it could also be reserved on transfer through clients to make their mm -hmm. Say that last part again, Brian. Uh, the finance committee has a reserve, uh, reserve fund of $20,000 that can be used for unforeseen. Um, but it would still expenses. it would still require require finance committee to sign off and a special town meeting vote. In all these cases, a special town meeting vote because it's appropriating taxpayer money, right? Well, the reserve fund would just take a finance committee vote because oh. it's appropriated at town meeting to twenty thousand dollars. So it doesn't, oh, okay. it doesn't need a oh, okay. it's at the discretion of finance committee. Okay. 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 Aside from getting a finance committee meeting done quickly. Is there a reason not to do that given that money seems to be for emergencies? Um, and how, how quick would that get put together? Like we... I would probably say that's that the... But um, it's just a matter of getting the members together. Obviously, we're going to have to post them. Oh, they like the next video. Okay. Uh, what, I mean, it, if that's a viable path, I would rather go that way. That money's been appropriated and really for a purpose like this. You know, if it's emergency money, then yeah. your thoughts? I guess I'm kind of more sympathetic to the idea. Let's just take care of this now. Uh, get it done. Um, if we've got a good estimate, we, if we know it's going to be five thousand dollars, was the yeah, just, cost, yeah. that's been confirmed. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, um, my house. And it's it's out of we have roughly something like a hundred thousand left, or was it worth sixty thousand? No, it's a hundred and thirty. Thirty thousand. I remember, I remember. I think it may actually be a little more than that. Yeah, I think, I think 130 was half of what was left. Yeah. But there's some uh, unspent money that, that might revert back. That is getting yeah, put I, back. Yeah. Ironically, the the, the uh, dishwasher replacement was about 5000 under what they asked. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it kind of breaks even, but. Yeah. yeah I, 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 for the school. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I think. 
yes, in theory, I agree with you that it would be it might be more appropriate yeah. to come out of that one, but I think we just got to get it done, get it off everybody's plate, and uh, that's just my thought. Now, sure. Julie's going to be the Julie, tiebreaker. Your thought? No, I, I'm inclined to agree with you, Joyce. I, uh, you know, I would be concerned about sending it to the finance committee for approval and possibly getting bogged down in some way. I'm, I'm. I'm inclined to say yes. Let's just take care of it. I am too. I'm rather. Yeah, I know you'd rather do, do, it, do it that but way. Take but take care it, of it tonight. But, but tonight. Like, yes, take care of it now. I think the best course of action is to take care of it tonight. Okay. All right. Well, so I'm let me motion. Um, I uh, move that we use CLFRF monies for the repair of the emergency backup generator at the Waitley Elementary School. Yeah, that can mean up to up to five thousand. Up to five thousand dollars. Second. All in favor? Joyce. Aye. Julie. Aye. Me. Aye. And I also just want to say in the meeting that I did. I again, I appreciated various people in the town weighing in on this because sometimes we don't have all of the information and it's worthwhile yeah. having the citizens communicate with us. And this was an instance where it was very helpful. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Next, new business to discuss and vote whether to approve a new lease for Fab County Emergency Medical Services to occupy its current location on a site owned by the town of Deerfield. Brian? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so again, we don't have the lease from here, but yeah. So this is the old lease? The one sent out? Yeah, the one, yeah. That, sorry. the one that was sent out was the old lease. Oh, so um, we have to wait till the next meeting? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We were I mean, hoping that some, yep. some, yep. my last Ship on the Board of Oversight meeting, there were figures to be no change, but until we actually have that in writing, I mean, no change, including the amount of the lease or maintenance or whatever payments, whatever we're calling those payments. Uh, but we don't have the copy in hand, so let us go to the next day. Okay. All right. Next, to discuss and vote to appoint a representative to the screening committee for the new SCEMS director. We had a meeting last week of the SCEMS boo and voted to authorize a Screening a committee to screen the resumes and initial set of candidates for the new position of chief. Uh, the com committee is going to be comprised of five people, one being the uh, either the administrator or representative of the administrator of the town of Deerfield, as their personnel, the personnel is handled through. Town of Deerfield's personnel policies. Uh, the second is uh, the ex the current interim director mm -hmm. uh, who has expressly said he is not interested in applying to this position, so there should not be a conflict of interest there. Mm -hmm. And then one representative of each of the towns, Sunderland, Deerfield, Waitley, mm -hmm. that are represented. Uh, I was asked to come back and locate and find a representative, preferably someone experienced in uh, first responder emergency operations, uh, mm -hmm. who would know the the right questions and know what to look for and the answers. Uh, mm -hmm. This has to go back. Has to be approved tonight because we want to set the committee at our next meeting, which is next Tuesday. Um, I believe the right person in town is our fire chief, J.P. Kennedy. Uh, he's got experience in this matters. Uh, I informally asked him he would be willing to serve if asked. Uh, and I think he's the kind of professional who would work well on that kind of committee. Okay. And, and he, if, and, uh, and he, he sounds like you. You are. You know. You will. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I talked to him. I didn't want to post someone's name without having <laughs> at least gotten an expression of willingness yeah. to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I think 
he would be a good candidate for us. Um, you know, he fire departments you know work with EMS and I think that you know, he's mm -hmm. done done hiring his job in Amherst. So yeah, I think you're you're you've identified a, a fine candidate. Okay, um, I could not have any objection to that. No, same here. Okay, so that being the case, I I will move to appoint J.P. Kennedy as our representative to the SCEMS Chief Screening Committee. I'll second. Okay. We'll both second. All in favor, Julie. Aye. Joyce. Aye. Me. Yes. Done. Uh, discuss and vote to set polling locations for calendar year 2024 as recommended by the town clerk who is sitting right here. Okay. Is any? No. Um, I don't know if you guys have any questions, but the biggest reason I want to move it there is because we have four elections next year, and a couple of them are going to be hopefully pretty big. Mm -hmm. We have the presidential election, we have state, we have state elections, and we have our local elections. Um, so I think that the town hall would be a better space for that. But I also, I love the town hall and its historical significance. <laughs> and I think that having voting there would be better. And it's, it's more of a central location for people. I know I had our local elections here. It was my first one I'd ever done. We only got like 50 people, so it was okay. And I apologize to residents for bouncing them back and forth, but almost everybody that walked in the door was like, I went to the town hall and I was here instead. So yeah. I talked to Neil. I am able to store all of the election equipment at the town hall so I won't have to lug it back and forth all year. Mm -hmm. I think it'll just work out a lot better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then the equipment's not needed for the early voting. So right, in the early voting, there's, still be there's here. some equipment that I will need for early voting, but not all of the equipment. Okay. So early yeah. voting will be here during my office hours. And then the actual voting day, I'm requesting to be at the town hall. So you can have one, one or two voting booths here. Exactly. That are here, and yep. but most of them will be. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. So I don't know how early voting is going to go next year, but this year I had seven people early vote. I think so in the president of the year you'll get more. Yes, I'm <laughs> hoping I get more. Yeah. But but it shouldn't be that many at one time that you'll need no. more than a couple of. Them. No. Yeah. And the, I because I don't have an election warden, I have mm -hmm. to run the election, and it would be easier for me to have early voting here. That way I can still work in front office mm -hmm. and help voters here. Yeah, but I think it's best that all of the general elections be held at the same place. Yes. So we don't mm -hmm. have this. Yes. To avoid confusion. This, yes. This, mm -hmm. So just yes. going forward, we should anticipate voting will be a town hall. Yes. It yeah. was hard. I think it was hard for previous town clerks because they were lugging everything back and yeah. forth. Mm -hmm. And that was the biggest deterrent, having it there. But um, talking with Neil and going over things, I have a space to keep everything, all the equipment and everything. So it'll be all right. Okay. okay. That yeah. makes a lot of sense. I had asked if you could speak to, to your reasons for wanting it at town hall. As much as I love town hall and I love going into a historic building to vote, I was like, are we going to just bounce back and forth every time there's a new clerk if there ever is another clerk? But mm -hmm. since you can store the equipment there, I know that that was Amy Schrader's primary reason for wanting to keep it at town offices. Yep. So I'd be happy to support it going to town hall again. Thank you. And as, as long as you're really clear in Communications. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Send out robo calls. We've got yeah. the scoop. You've got I any have, number. I have this, the signs that the police can put up on the road. Yeah. And... Yeah. Yeah. And just so that we make that effort. Yeah. I think that's. Yeah. That's... And I think when people go to vote, if somehow we can just make clear there that this is where it will be in the future. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right, okay. So, so day of voting would be right. Day of voting and day of voting would be at the town yes. hall. Any other voting that takes place yeah. 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 early voting will be at the right. town offices. Yeah. Voting days will be at the town hall. Yeah. Right. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, I would makes... move to set the polling locations for calendar year 2024 as has been recommended by the town clerk. I'll second that. All in favor. Joyce. Aye. Julie. Aye. Fred. Aye. Thank you. Uh, is it Bob, you just walked in a little late to hear us authorize the money for the generator. <laughs> Great so, work. It's stay good, good job. Stay here. Yeah. Just stay yeah, because see. the fun is just about, about to start. About, that's how effective you are. What <laughs> happens? We're moving Before on. You can get yeah. here. Just I, the next item I think is going to be of great interest to you as yeah. well. Well, I have another school committee meeting at seven if I'm here. So okay, okay. Right, well, you want we'll me get to stay for the beginning of the next one or what? Sure. The next, the next one, I think, is just it's right up your alley. Is the it about time. fishing or hunting or something? No, no. It, it is about the fee schedule for services provided <laughs> by the town clerk, which includes fishing licenses. Right? Fishing licenses. So yes, coming. All right. I okay. just need. After a special town meeting, I'll be able to start doing it again. I think that's great. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. I have time. a tough time online doing it. See, yes. Yeah, yep. there we go. Okay. But well, we appreciate you at the school. Okay. Uh, thank you. Likewise. Thanks, Bob. Uh, thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe he's going to have to find out about the fee schedule on FCAT. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And this the fee schedule does not include deep fishing and hunting licenses. Does it's not done. include hunting and fishing licenses. Not yet. Because no. that's not on the no. it's on the horizon, but we're not over that hill yet. Okay. Why don't you give us a few words about sure? The so increases. in 2016, our previous previous town clerk started to update our bylaws and was not able to finish that. So I am in the process of redoing the codification of all of the bylaws. In our bylaws, the fees, the last time they were adopted was in 2005. Okay. So I, Lynn, the previous who started it, kind of drafted a new fee schedule and I am going off of that fee schedule. I checked around with other towns, like Sunderland, and I have uh, Deerfield here if you guys want to look at it, but they're pretty much equal to surrounding towns. The new ones, proposed. you mean? Yes, the yeah. new ones. So I personally did not change any of the fees, but they, like I said, they're from 2005. It's 2023. Things go up, cost of paper goes up. Blah, 20 blah. years. Yeah. Uh, so there's there, there aren't any like significant jumps, but there are some increases. The ones that say NA, they're they're um they don't really do those anymore, so that's why it says NA, like there's no cost to it. Oh because because we we don't furnish abstract abstract copies of records like it's just here you go. Okay. I don't even know what some of these are. Yeah. 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 Item 18, what is a Scipio room? I tried to Google that. I have no idea, but it is in our mass general law, so I'm just going with it. All righty. Uh yeah, I see some of these have gone up like 50%, but on the other and hand, some some haven't changed at all. Right. Yeah. So and the ones that are by 50%, they're going from five to ten, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're not going uh, for 10, 10 to 15 10 to 15 to 50 or 100 percent but yeah it, in yeah, dollar yeah. terms they're not going up a huge amount and yeah there are quite a few that still aren't changing at all yeah you know? and and i think being uh, similar to surrounding town is important to yeah. right um so i would um move wait, 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 oh, sorry. before that uh do you intend to revisit this like every year every Every five uh, years. Ha ha how often? Not every year. No, hopefully this is revisited. Every five years seems like it would be ideal because mm -hmm. I mean, a couple of years would you you you're gonna like increase it with a couple dollars? Like it's not really worth it. So every five years. Okay, yeah. I just want to give an idea how, how long people yeah. figure that. This, these numbers will be in effect. And some of these fees, I mean, it was it was, it was adopted in 2005, but some of these go back to the 90s. 
Yeah. Okay. Now, okay. And now can I move? Okay. Yes. <laughs> I move that we uh, adopt the schedule of fees uh, as presented by our town clerk in the meeting materials. I second. Any other discussion? No. All in no. favor? Julie? Yes. Joyce? Aye. Yes. Okay, thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. To review, discuss, and vote whether to send a comment letter to the Department of Public Utilities regarding its proposed guidelines, in quotes, for a municipal aggregation <laughs> program. So strike three. What? Strike three. So, um, Not ready. Right. So, um, oh. uh, Colonial Power is uh, the, our, the town's consultant for municipal aggregation. And there was a webinar that was held uh, by Colonial Power with the, the towns that are in the group. Bank account, I think yeah. the bank account mostly bank that's account. the aggregation program. Uh, there were guidelines that were issued, draft guidelines that were issued by DPU that were concerning to them surrounding uh, the municipal aggregation program in the sense that it would reduce uh, participating towns' flexibility in um, in shaping or molding their program as they want. Colonial Power was going to send um, you know, an email with the outline more specifically of the issues with a template letter, but we don't have that yet. So that's what that. Okay. That, that's okay. So then it'll come up in another we'll meeting. Move yeah. on to the agenda for the next meeting. Uh, updates from select board members or liaison assignments. Julie, anything? No updates from me at present. Brian has been liaising with the water commissioners about their paying off. Uh, the loan that they have coming due, and I'm staying up to date with the information he's sending out. Joyce, anything? Oh, I'm pulling up. Um, the, the thing I really love about being the board of oversight member for Wadley on the uh, South County Senior Center is we just have a freaking awesome director who really um, she really does her job. Um, she's been out there getting money by writing grants, um, and she's keeping track of the numbers. And this is a report she gave us earlier in September, um, a total of $154,000 worth of grants for programs at the senior center. Like digital literacy is the big one that stands out. But um, there's like the Mass in Motion, which is helping with movement classes. Um, there's a, an outreach grant. There's another Health for Older Adults grant that helps them provide services there. Uh, uh, it's just awesome. Uh, it, it's like doubling our budget by putting uh, all those grant applications in. Uh, and you know, and there's deadlines and there's fine print in there, and she's just she's just great at getting those in. Um, so I just want to let you know your money that we spend paying her salary is very well spent. The money that we spend on the assistant is very well spent because when she's doing that, somebody's got to be doing the actual senior center business. Um, they've got uh, 106 new members since last time we uh, we asked them for that, which would be like since about January, um, nine new members from Waitley. Um, and which is kind of proportional to uh, our town's relative population among those new members. Um, and they've got like on the days when they have programming, which is heavier Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they have an average of about 63 people a day interacting with their programs. So I just oh. wanted to toot the horn for the South County Senior Center a little bit there. Um, that uh, that things are happening there. And if you've been staying away because you don't think anything's happening there, um, I'd say uh, give another try, get, take another look. There's a lot of uh, classes, there's a lot of social um, activities, and there's the, the big, the digital literacy thing where you can learn a bit about technology if you're a person who, uh, who hasn't had an opportunity to do that in the past. And if there's anything else we can do to publicize these programs? We oh, yes, yes. Well, the South County Senior Center has an awesome newsletter. Yes. Thank you for asking, um, which is posted on the Town of Deerfield's website because the uh, Town of Deerfield is the fiscal agent for the um, for the South County Senior Center. Uh, I know it serves all of Waitley, uh, Sunderland, and Deerfield. Do we have it posted on our website? I 
remember asking one of the Amy's it, about it, it, that. If not, we probably should <laughs> find a, yeah, We should find a way to get that posted there. Right. Yeah, or at least a link to the to the South if, County somehow, Senior we, Center. If all this money's coming in, field. we should find a way to yeah, make yeah. use of it and yeah. have good numbers for the next grant application. Yeah. Okay. Anything right. else? Um, I've got nothing right now. I've got a meeting scheduled with Brian with the Housing Trust uh, related release to Kate on behalf of the Housing Trust later in the week, and we will talk about that and hopefully have a report after the next meeting. Uh, Town Administrator update, Brian, why don't you start with Christian Lane? Um, Christian Lane, drainage research. So at the last meeting, uh, we were tasked with trying to find out uh, the location of the pipes in relation to the right of way. Um, and um, we were able to find uh, plans from, I believe it was in the 1990s at some point, when the water lane was extended down Christian Lane in that area, only on the on the exact day. Um, and they do show the location um, of that chain. I'm going to share the screen so that we can so that we can see it. Yeah. Um, this is the drainage ditch with the you know the terminus of it, and then this dashed line where my cursor is going across, and it has the D between it. That is a drainage pipe. Um, that goes here. Here's a concrete bound, which marks you know that side of the of the right of way. Um, and then you also see so this is the excuse me, this is the south side, right? This is the yeah. south side, and then the north side over here. Um same uh, dash line here that my cursor is following with the D. Um and it seems to stay outside of the uh, the public right away. And then it goes off um, out the other. Yeah, the other page. The other page. So this is um, east, right? This would be going east. Um, did it not yeah. share? Uh, it didn't update over here. It didn't did not update on it. This will be uh, the first one. Second. Yeah, that's the second. Yes. Yep. Um. So this is to the east. So you see the dash line continues on the south side with the D here. Um. And then it seems to cross the road over here to the north side. And this is the continuation of that pipe on the north side. Um, and then it goes off this way in this direction. When this is where I think it daylights back here to the to the goalie. So mm -hmm. um that's what we found. Yeah. Um, and if we were to go further, we would get too long playing road. Going towards long yeah. 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 Yes. yeah. For the east or to the right. Um, and it looks like where it crosses there, uh, where it says um, like 15, two apostrophes M, that is a tree there? Or what is that That symbol? Yeah, that's not It's exactly. a tree. And yeah. so it seems like the two pipes meet under a tree. Looks like. Yeah. Okay. Or, yeah. Mm -hmm. That probably wasn't thought out very well. <laughs> tree may not have been or, there when yeah, the pipe was laid. Mm, yeah, after. yeah, that could have been done in there, I suppose. Let's try to see an inch fruit, I think, it's a tree. I have no idea with 15 inch M. Maple? I guess it's probably maple, yeah. 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 yeah, with a 15 inch. Well, diameter yeah, maple that's be, 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 be 
feet. But I, and my guess is it's supposed to be feet. No, I assume that's no, it's out. inch. I think they mean diameter. I think that's the diameter of oh, the tray. Oh, they're not height. Not height. Okay. Yeah. And uh, it's sort of been in nineteen. This was done in the nineties, so that they're probably, probably a little bigger now. Yeah, they're <laughs> probably much much bigger now. So still, the question is, would it be fifteen inches for something that was planted or grew mm -hmm. after the pipe was laid sometime in the early forties? Yeah. Okay. How big would it get in 50 years? So that's my report back on that. Let's see. So interested. Do any comments on this finding? I have a comment. Tom Morowski, I live in Christian Lane. Is that was obviously an issue 90 years ago. And if it, if it was never addressed, it probably would still be a bad issue. It's something that whether or not it's in the right away, whether or not you can fix that pipe, it's an issue that should be dealt with. You know, I really do think that it's going to get worse and more, especially over bridge Jeff's place. Yeah. Um, I would rather not see you dig up my front yard, but something's yeah. got to be done. Yeah. You know, regardless of that, that yeah. pipe, whatever. I mean, trees have been planted on top of it. The thing's probably 10 feet down under the biomass. You know, it's probably pretty deep because, you know, the lay of the land. Right. Yeah. But something's got to be done because yeah. and we'll, there's a lot. There's a lot of water yeah. there a couple times yeah. a year, and then in the winter, God only knows. Absolutely. And I know yeah. you folks got water in the cylinder. Yeah, we get it. Yeah. And yeah. you're you're just circulating water. Eventually, hate to say it, but uh, I hope that that pump don't fail. You wonder. So yeah, we put in a cistern. There's other things. The, one yeah. of the worst parts is it comes into uh, the old well it's in the basement. Because mm -hmm. the water table gets raised so high, it comes right up. You know, I cap that, I fix that. But mm -hmm. nevertheless, it gets pretty hot in there. I can't yeah, it, yeah. You know, and it destroys my farmland. Right. That oh, I that, that, that. As as I indicated last time, it's not a question of the necessity that something should be done. The question is who's responsible for paying for it. Well, it, but but I I, I think yeah. they appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. But you I, know, and I think you know, like also, it was it was an issue that was done. By ingenuity, the, the people who lived around here who had yeah. that problem got together and just solved the problem, right. you know. And it's probably been draining, you know. Okay, I'm sure it drains a little, but you know, yeah, it, it's something that should be really addressed. You know, maybe something put in the right of way next to the street, something that's properly uh, uh, engineered. But we got, I don't even know what's where are we clay pipe. I'm where sure are we on the grants? I know last time we talked about yeah. Um, Looking into some grants, is, I, and it's only been a couple of weeks, so I know we silly may not have been able to identify any grants. But um, are we still optimistic that we could identify some grants? It's gonna that's gonna be a longer time right. period to find them and apply for them and get them. Just be nice if there's a solution down the line. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, I think that's what we're all we're all gonna figure out. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, it is. You know, like I know if that's a clay pipe and it can be reused at least. The top part, something to be done with. Further down the line, I saw that map with trees that were planted on top, like they weren't yeah. at my property. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I know I have a building in Northampton every year. I have to read the, the lines because it gets, you know, hey, it's, it's my pollution. Right. You know, I'm not going to dig it up, but, you know, every year I go through the, the and fix it. It's not, yeah. it's not that expensive. I mean, but. You know, I mean, someone's got to be. Well, like, and that, that sounds like a solution that the, the owners could take care of if reaming right. it would actually. It, it'd be a great solution if I knew that it was draining somewhere. But further on down the line, it's not going anywhere. We're at the, we're at the beginning of it. But you don't like it draining into your basement? <laughs> no, it's not really very <laughs> cool. No, it, you know, it, it's got to, you know, the sad part is, is it's got to be started down on Long Plain. It's got to work its way back because. Yeah. You know, we have a catch basin. It's right up to the top of the catch basin. Like I said, it comes mm -hmm. into our, our, yeah. you know, our shallow well. Mm -hmm. um, but he's got the worst of it. Um, yeah. You know, and, and I, I don't know, you know, what the solution is. And I, I have no problem. You know, I mean, it wouldn't be very, you know, it could be costly to have somebody go in there with a root, root cutter. I don't even know what size line it was. It looked like six inch. It was on our, on our house there, going from Jeff's, the Cocots, to Borowski's 144. Um, they laid it on my end, Tom, it's a 12 inch pipe. Yeah, but th doesn't it go to uh, clay? Parts of it are 
corrugated steel, parts of it are clay. Right. Yeah, you know, and that's one of the reasons we we weren't around for the the scoping. I wish right. I was. Nobody told us we came yeah. home and there was lines all over the place. And my that's wife was yeah, it was unfortunate. My wife was like, "What, what are they doing? They're going to rip up our lawn." We had no idea. Mm -hmm. I wish somebody had told us so that we could have been there because I I I worked in construction for years and yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm you, aware, you know what to assume when you see a chop. I'm run, aware yeah. of a lot of this stuff. I've seen it. I mean, if, if it's an issue. I mean, yeah. uh, I, I I thought about it. If it's a straight line, you can take some schedule of ninety or something and shoot it inside. If it's an eight inch pipe, cut the roots, throw a smaller pipe in. That section could be done, could be solved. You know, I have no idea the size of the pipe. Though. You know, if it's a twelve inch pipe, you could line it. If it's an eight inch pipe, you might have a, a harder time. Um, I didn't. I didn't get to see the the scope. I didn't. You know. Um, we were, you know, yeah. I'm kind of dismayed at because, like I said, I have experience in that, and I, I, you know, could help out. But right now, I'm kind of shooting blind. And yeah, well, it may it may take some combination of the affected people doing something right. that's short term. If it's, but if I I agree, we we probably need to look for grants to see if we could get some professional to go out and look at that and propose. Well, or a perhaps better engineered solution. Yeah, you know, the unfortunate thing is, is they came through with the camera and it just went under my house. It went under our house, should I say? And they stopped. Well, they could be that they could get that camera again. Right. If well, that, that would be the ticket. It's to right. start on long plane and go from yeah. the end up. Because if you can start on long plane, then you can work your way gradually up. And people, who, you know, could do it on their own, line the pipe, cut the, cut the roots. Do it needs to be done, mm -hmm. but we have no idea of the whole scope. We have an idea of the mm -hmm. scope from Jeff's house to my house. Okay, yeah, maybe, maybe we can get that Where's scope your back. Yeah, and that would be wonderful. Get, yeah, Dr. Wayne Keith. I, I think they did do other sections of the pipe, I just don't know exactly which one. No, and, and get, I, yeah, I'd love to be in get, get some, yeah, get some like sort of report or at least have you have the owners. You could either, uh, I don't know, meet up or, or somehow get that information. Yeah, right, I, right. We're not like purposely trying to keep information from no, anybody. Right. Right. And I'm sure Dean K Keith and, and uh, um, uh, what, why am I blanking on this thing? Wayne. Wayne. Keith and Wayne are not trying to prevent anybody from getting through. Well, then, no, it's not that. It's, you know, when we came home and there's Mars and Milano, we're like, what's going on? Right. Are they going to replace it? It's blue. Yeah. And I know that that's waterline. You know, mm -hmm. generally when they when they fixate, right? Yeah. Blue is waterline, right? Correct. Yep. And I thought it was waterline. I didn't know it was sewer drain line, which is usually a different color, anyways. Mm -hmm. yes. Isn't that orange or, or red? Yeah. Uh, silver know? is green, so that's why yeah. they they use the blue just to verify. Because that's what he has. Right. That's right. Um, but you know, I love I'd love to be involved in it if I could. And like I said, it has to be probably done from the you know from the end back mm -hmm. to, to you know to not waste time. To get it done right, if there's something easy that can be done further down the line, then we know that. Um, and then maybe you have somebody who can write a report or somebody who can just, you know, give us more information. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. it's documented, and I think that maybe we can get a meeting of the people who are served by this by the system, yeah. present mm -hmm. that report, and then try to you know, work, work, work through them, you know, work through the, all of the owners of the system. And I don't think anybody knows what's going on because, uh, you know, um, uh, yeah, Scott, but the group together might know. Right. Yeah, Scott was yeah. saying that yeah. was crushed. And we don't know if it's crushed or if there's more roots right. in it. Yeah. And like I said, roots are easy to, to fix. We line the pipe, we figure something out, somebody can figure something out, sure. Yeah. You know, whether or not we replace the whole thing. No? I think the first thing is just. Find out the nature and extent of the problems we're talking Agreed. about. Absolutely. As much you know, as is, it, is it a rebuild of the whole system? Is it a you know repairs yeah. of certain areas? We just don't know at this point. Absolutely. And that kind of information would be really helpful right. for facility yeah. to write a grant application to try right. and get well, yeah, uh, to yeah, get the yeah, money yeah, to right. if, if it turns out to be something that's going to be out outside of the means right. of your you know the ingenious. People who live along there have been dealing with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah, definitely like the idea of getting the scope back and doing a systematic survey of that neighborhood. Um, yeah, and we can but, talk to Wayne and Keith again, see if we can get the scope back. Yeah, yeah we can see what they, I mean, they didn't write a phone over report. Yeah. So maybe, well, they, right. maybe they did do all that and it's written somewhere. I don't, I don't yeah. know. 
And if, yeah. or if they didn't, then have a, a more scheduled, you know, if they have to go back and do other areas mm -hmm. of, of the mm -hmm. system, talk to the people involved. And what, yeah. you either get yeah. them a report or yeah. you know, have them yeah. there yeah. when it's being done. Yeah. Yep. So they can see it firsthand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I, think, I think also when you're when you're reading a grant application, yeah. you're trying to decide who to give the money to. The people who sound like they know what they're doing always have a leg up on the people who are like, well, we don't know what's under there. Yeah. That is going to look very good. Yeah. The more information uh, we try to go get, in with, and the more yeah, the more prepared you are. And, and that's just giving. I mean, I, I, I mean, Sylvia put it together, but we've got to give her the information. That's going to make a strong application. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, and in a lot of the challenges we have with grants is, but it's get it's gotten a little better in, in the recent past, but a lot of them more paper design. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So that's you know that's a lot of that oftentimes that trickles us up because yeah the initial confusion. Well, I mean, I mean, first first step is trying to best determine what the nature of the whole problem and extent of the whole problem. Yeah. And if there are any quick fixes to implement those to at least right. improve the situation. But, right. Yeah. Right. Because right. mm -hmm. we've got water backing up on your property. We just don't know exactly where it's coming from. Is it coming from multiple sources? Yeah. Or And we need to, before we, well, we do anything know. anything at all, we need to know those answers. Yeah, we got to know where it's going. I'm new here. You know, we've been here for a few years, but we right. didn't know we're picking up on it quickly. Okay. You gotta figure it out. Okay. We'll see if we can work on either yeah. scoping or getting more information from the the previous scoping. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I mean, we've gone this far, and, and my biggest issue is uh, the runoff from the road from the Christian Lane itself running onto the property there. So I can turn a torrential downpour. I can see it running down. I mean, naturally, you've got the water from the ditch already there, plus the water coming off the road going down into there. So that pipe is doing double duty. Yeah, but the, the town isn't responsible for money. Well, there's for, no drainage on Christian Lane. So that water's, you know. The, the town, the, the, you know, the, Brian, Brian has looked into that. The town is, is not responsible for runoff from streets onto private property. Yeah. That, okay. Yeah. That, that, that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, library question updates. The um the rehabilitation, I guess we we'll call it the stairs, uh have been completed. Or the or refurbishment of yeah. the stairs have been completed at the library. Um and the projects to upgrade the electrical and uh, the plumbing are underway, but they're not yet completed. Um, water department borrowing. Um, mm. So we have a plan. Um, so the uh, the water department is going to, uh, they're going to reborrow $100,000. They're going to pay down $55,000 of the loan. Um, they're going to reborrow. The, the, the loan from the town. Or the, the, the loan to which one? They're the their bank loan. The yeah. one they took okay. out okay. to, yep. to take yep. care of water merger. Yep, the yep. expense the bank of the water merger. Um and they're gonna do it for a period of six months. Um the difficulty that and the reason we're doing it for just six months is that um uh, I talked about it earlier, their retained earnings disappear from June until about November, right? When free cash is certified, retained earnings are certified. So they need this, they need a little bit of extra time to get their retained earnings certified, of which they're projected to have enough money in their retained earnings left over from their hookup fees uh, to be able to pay down that loan. But there's the timing issue that they need to they need to to, to rebar so. Um but they still have they have that roughly fifty something thousand dollars is somehow available in a fund that is that does not need certification. But yeah, so they have about sixty thousand plus dollars left over from the project that they didn't be used. Oh, so okay. there's there's that oh, one okay. so then, oh, that remains yeah. in the project account from the borrowing. So it's yeah, they're gonna make that back. 
Um, we did meet with uh, the town's financial consultant to talk about different amounts in, in, in terms that would be attractive to get the most, mm -hmm. you know, most interest in the in the offering. So um, okay. it seems like that's the best approach. So come next April, hopefully that that should be that be completely fair. Okay. Okay. Good. Cool. Um, Taylorville Road Reconstruction Project. We talked. Um, we had a, a a brief project meeting with the engineer at Mastop in the city of Northampton, um, and it was an issue related to I don't know if you remember a while back. Yeah, the, the select board got the or was asked to choose like the 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 face decoration. Yeah, the decoration. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, the, 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 the retained walls. Talking about putting so it was a soil nail wall, which is they yeah. drive these very large um nails soil nails right into the um into the side of the embankment that way you don't have to excavate out the top and it's just it's less disturbance overall um but each one of those in, in most cases each one of those 15 to 20 foot long nails that you're going to drive in is going to be driven under underground obviously but it's outside of the right of way um into the uh, Property owned by the city of Northampton, which of course is Article 97 protected. Um, even the, even under the ground, under so, the surface is protected. So we're gonna okay. we're gonna have a conversation. Uh, Waitley Northampton and EOEA is gonna have a conversation about what's you know what's the impact here. Um, oh, unfortunately, the the way that Article 97 seems to be written, it's the extent of the impact. Um, Goes more to the mitigation that's required. What triggers the mitigation is is the um, is the, the the change in the interest of real property. So you know the easement that we would need mm -hmm. um, from the city of Northampton is what triggers the Article Nine Seven mitigation requirements. Now the easement's going to be bigger because we can't just the way that the project is going to be set up is you know. We're not going to tell the contractor you need to put a nail right here. We're not going to get an easement for that specific location. Right. If they need to do it in the field, they might, for whatever reason, yeah. they need to adjust. So the easement's going to be larger, and that's a conversation that we had with them. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to have like about an acre of mm -hmm. um, fit, uh, an acre of Article 97 impacts mm -hmm. to the project. Um, so does that mean we have to Mitigate. Does that mean we need to have another additional acre of mitigation, which means we have to when we purchase the property somewhere that's around that area, or can we say, all right, well, the impacts are really small and they're underground? Can we do less? Which is what we need to talk about. Mm -hmm. That's what the call is about. So we're going to call with the OEA. It may be an issue of first impression for them with the soil nail walls and. Mm -hmm. But I mean, overall, it's better than watershed because we're able to keep that the mature sort of ground cover and the roots and everything else stabilized, right? We're not just yeah. digging it up. And so mm -hmm. it, it, overall, it's better in terms of the, the watershed, but it creates these other complications. And, uh, yeah, main, yeah. Yeah. and, and those other good things, you know, they, we don't really want to be punished for that. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, in, in a sense, right. That's kind of what it feels like. It's, yeah, and, and I, I think that point was trying was was trying to be made to Northampton because they suggested that well, there's not much benefit to the watershed for this. And, well, actually, actually there, there, is. there is. The engineer tried to explain like, well, there's you know there's, there's a lot less temporary impacts. What are considered temporary impacts during construction? Like there's a lot less excavation and bare ground and stuff that you're going to try to reestablish. Yeah. Why not keep what you have there? Um, but so that's that's what's going on with that. We're still on on uh, we're still on track for uh, advertising the project in October of 2025. Um, we're at 75 percent design um, of the project. Um, and just as a reminder, there's you know there are right of ways, there are easements that the town are going to need to that the town is going to need to acquire, both permanent and temporary, um, along Haydenville Road. And that's going to be finalized once we get, you know, 100% design, which should happen by the fall. And then we'll have to go through the process of 
of the legal process of acquiring those easements. Uh, reach out to landowners. Keith has, has done a good job of you know talking to uh, the landowners. A, a lot of that is the city of Northampton. A lot of that front is the city of Northampton, but there are residents that then on the frontage along there and trying to uh, talk with them about how we can how we can uh, impact them at least, but still have a you know, quality project. So um, that'll be that'll be sort of the next part. And as part of that, it's going to be Article 97, working through the Article 97 issue with the city of Northampton. I'd like to make the argument that we're not changing the use of the property, but I don't think that's going to fly because um, it's watershed land now and it's going to be watershed land once we have the easement, but I don't, I don't think that's going to be successful. But so, do, do we have any options for or thoughts where we're going to get the land? What we might have to swap out. I, mean, I, mean, I know there was talk about one piece of property on the guess on the east side. It's yeah, well, that's commercially. That's one that we had identified as 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 most likely and probably the easiest to. Uh, do. If necessary, might we try to expand that to cover the the extra the, acre, the extra acre yeah. for the nails? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if there's been any contact with, with that land property owner or not. Uh, just the initial letter to let them know that we were that we were interested in in that in a, in a portion of that property. Um, it's pretty isolated. Probably. The other part because we have huge if I remember it's that. like a 34 acre yeah. total lot of which we then now be looking at two acres rather than one. Yeah, it, it's a third, yeah, it's a third acre logging, logging uh, parcel. Mm -hmm. So, okay, um, that's that's still going forward. Um, and then I forwarded the last thing I have is uh, from Natalie from Rep Way about the forests as uh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I you guys sent a letter in on that when she first sent an email out on uh, Forest as Climate Solutions Initiative. So there's yeah. some uh, listening sessions that are scheduled. I think it's September 14th. A virtual listening session, September 12th, from okay. 6 to 8 30 p.m. That's right, Nana. Oh. Is it the twelve? Yes, it is exactly right now. So, so everybody log on. Log on. <laughs> um, you got an hour and a half left. When was the uh, um, written comments are due by September fifth? So, um, yeah. Okay. Anything else? The live stream right here. Anything else, Brian? I think that's it. Okay. Any items not anticipated from anyone or any further comments? I'll um, take a motion to adjourn. Ne next meeting, September 26th and October 10th, 6 o'clock. Oh, eight. yeah, go ahead. Here and by Zoom. Yeah. Um, we have a um, received an application to transfer liquor license. So if that's the next meeting date. That's what we'll hold that. Um, oh, it's, uh, it's a uh, public hearing. Yeah, I mean, okay. public hearing first transfer. It's okay. a corporate. Corporate it's not changing change. the entity, it's changing the corporate. Oh, okay. Okay. So it would be fairly straightforward. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I would move that we adjourn. I'll second. All in favor, Julie. Yes. Joyce. Aye. Aye. Done. Adjourn. Okay.